Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Father William, pastor here at Holy Cross in St. Pat's. And on behalf of Tom, Stephanie, and John, and family, brothers, sisters-in-law gathered today, on behalf of them, I welcome you all here as we gather to uh, say farewell to Alina, a woman of grace, faith, joy, presence, peace, love, all that is good and true. So thank you for being here today. We'll begin the service today with the words of remembrance. And uh, Tom and your children, come forward. Thank you for being here today to remember Alina Robertson, to remember her love for life and her love for us, all of us here. I also want to thank you for your prayers, your kind thoughts, your support, and your presence while Alina was on her ALS journey. I hope that what I say here today will honor Alina will be a faithful witness to her strong Catholic faith and will be a blessing to her memory. Alina was born on November 3rd, 1954, in Fort William, Ontario. She spent a happy childhood growing up on the family market garden with her older brothers, Hendrik, Benedict, and a network of family and friends. The entire family worked as a team on the farm, and she helped with many chores. One of her greatest pleasures was riding her horses, Sam and Copper Queen, with neighborhood friends. An accomplished musician, Alina studied music and education and taught music to elementary school children. Alina took time away from teaching to raise our children, Stephanie and John. Alina always made friends easily. She enjoyed meeting people, and it was always reciprocated. Her pleasure in meeting people and, ex and, in, and experiencing new things made for a love of, of travel. She also spent time outdoors walking and meeting and talking with her neighbors. After retirement, we began our many travels together. We joined a local bowling club and develop, developed many close friendships there. Alina's last few months at home were filled with visits and communication with friends and family members. Alina faced her final illness with grace and devotion strength, courage, and a positive attitude. Never once did she complain about being handed this disease. Her strong Catholic faith and attitude of gratitude was an inspiration to all. Alina's focus on people, particularly her family and friends, never, never wavered. She always thought of others, which made for the best partner, the best mother, and the best friend. Alina was powerfully maternal and worked tirelessly at being a great mother. She was incredibly supportive of her children and made every effort to nurture them with the love and support they required to thrive and be happy. She was incredibly proud of their growth into capable, successful, and productive adults. She remembered every birthday and holiday and made each a very special uh, uh, celebration. She enjoyed cooking and baking, particularly if it was for a special occasion. To Alina, family always came first. I'm proud to have been able to call her my wife and to have had the privilege 
of living, loving, and being loved by this marvelous person. Someone who sets such a good example of what it really means to put family first. She was the model for all of us in living her life as a good person who left this world a better place. Alina was a person who met and accepted people for who they were and how they were and left them better people for having met her. She was grateful for the many opportunities that came her way. She looked for the best in all people. She brought a smile and a joy of life to all her activities. Alina was many things to many people, a wonderful life partner to me, a fantastic mother to her children, a great cook to family and friends, a supportive, dedicated, proficient teacher to her students and her teaching colleagues, and also to her friends. Alina was a cheerful, generous, and dedicated team player to her teammates and to her fellow teachers. She was a bright light in the face of adversity. She was a soft-spoken person who was loyal and kind and did good things for others. She made the world a better place. And the people who knew her were better people for having known her. I was a better person for having been part of her life. Her close friends and family were very important to her. She visited, spoke, and communicated with many of them in the last months, and she was grateful for their love and support. She will be re remembered fondly by her many friends made her over the course of her life. Alina, your life was a blessing. Your memory, a treasure. You were loved beyond words and missed beyond measure. Your memory will never leave us, as you will live on in our hearts. We will never forget Alina, as she gave us so much to remember. We miss you. We will love you forever and always. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, they didn't know this was going to happen. Um, I, I personally didn't prepare anything to say. Um, I sat down to try a few times and then I just stood back up because I didn't want to. Um, I'm just going to try and freestyle it for a second. Um, I just, grief is a strange thing. Um, it's a lot of things and the strangest one is that I've been feeling immensely thankful, which seems like such a counterintuitive response, and it really feels that way. Um, but just one example of, of this, I mean, I've been, I do feel like I've been given a great start to my life from both my parents, but today's not about you. So um, <laughs> when, when mom was first diagnosed before the seriousness or even the reality had totally settled in, she took each of us in the family out uh, for a meal, it was great, we went and got Thai food, and she, after just the normal standard chit chat, she said, hey, I've got a serious question for you. Is there anything I need to ask your forgiveness for? And that kind of floored me, like I was, it was the most, um, the most emotionally intelligent thing I think a person could do, and the most strangely selfless thing that a person could do being handed a uh, diagnosis like that and thinking, oh no, how does this affect everyone else? Um, so that was, yeah, that, I feel like I, I learned something there very, very powerfully and strongly. And for some reason, the only other thing that comes to mind to share with you right now is we were talking about how she had prepared everything for today, which on one hand is great because I didn't want to have to do it, but I think we all... I, we, I could have used something to do in the last month, um, but we were talking about it, and I said, well, this is great. You know, it's almost too bad you're not going to be there to see it. Um, and, and her response was, oh, I'll, I'll be looking down. 
drinking an A&W root beer. And I don't know why. This is not something I'd ever known her to love, but that was what she felt was her celebratory. So cheers. Cheers. Well done. Captured her beautifully. Okay, family, coming back with me. Let's all be his voice, right? Let's see him, him number 596. 596, five, now we're red handle. Be not afraid.
And in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. On the day of her baptism, Alina was welcomed into the church, given new life in Christ, and clothed with the garment of salvation. Today, in her parish community, we greet her remains. We surround her with the church's prayer. We commend her to the mercy of God and pray that the promise made to her in baptism will be fulfilled. What a life. What a disciple. What a woman. How privileged were we here today to say goodbye to her, to remember her, to mourn, to grieve, and to sanctify. Gone to God's with A and W root beer in hands. <laughs> you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to all. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O oh God, who called your daughter Alina to serve you in affliction and sickness, grant we pray that she who followed your son's example of suffering may also receive the reward of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God, forever and ever. Please be seated now as her brother Benedict comes forward for the first reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life.
Brother Henrik will now come forward for the second reading. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Please stand if you're able. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When he saw the crowds, Jesus went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be satisfied. And blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Yep. She planned it all. Just before I left on holidays, some final revisions. I look back over the email correspondence that I had with Helena over the last year, in addition to the many visits we had, and there's a book in it.
And Tom, you said it already. How she lived a life of meaning and purpose to the end, even in the face of living with this terrible disease. And she was very clear in pointing that out. She was living with ALS. Okay, you're gonna help me out. Take out the program, look on the back. Because within her poetry lies her deepest teaching. Let's read this one together. I listen for God's voice to lead me to the sunset, a peaceful and serene ending to a beautiful day. Grant me grace to thrive among the yellows, the oranges and reds, and every tint and ooh that paint my evening sky. Please, God, calm the winds at the dying of the day. May a place of sky prevail with peace that trends even the wildest storm. The beauty of the sunset floods my bursting heart. Acceptance of the evenings brings easy to say goodnight. The bright sky dims and night winds over day. As morning comes, my spirit soars to greet the rising sun. With soul uplifted, I rejoice, giving thanks for all my sunsets and the promise of my beautiful sunrise. Oh. Do you want to know the backstory to that one? Of course you do. I'm going to tell you. I suggested to her that her poetry would be a beautiful thing to put on the back of the program. And she asked me, she sent me an email saying, um, which one would you choose, Father? I said, sunset. Here's what she said back to me. I thought you'd choose that one. When I read it, I'm reminded of my after dinner walk with Tom. My diagnosis was weighing heavily upon me. We tried to do normal things, but life was not normal anymore. Then came the most beautiful sunset I have ever seen. A beautiful gift from God. I felt a sense of peace and I knew everything would be okay. Yes, all is well. And I have been and continue to be blessed beyond belief. Thank you, Father William. I hang on to every word you spoke. Those wonderful coping strategies have led to a life of thriving and growing. I learned how to live while preparing to die. I'm still learning. Instead of feeling bitter and hopeless, I'm grateful and I find joy. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Every day I walk with Jesus and that has made all the difference. My once terrifying journey has become a journey of love, gratitude, and hope. It's pretty amazing. Good choice of poem, Father William. Thank you. Back at you. <laughs> Great poem, Marlena. But I really feel I gotta share another poem with you because it was my second choice. <laughs> and this was written on a ferry from Athens when you were in Greece. Hmm? It's called Let My Soul Rejoice. Hmm. 
Let my soul rejoice. Even when suffering surrounds and overwhelms each moment of my new reality, I listen to my deepest feelings, search for truth in my heart to find my path to God to rejoice. My valley is so very dark and deep, impossible to fathom that any spark of light exists within my endless turmoil, but still I know that God is good. So I rejoice simply at first. A simple quest of finding joy brings new light to my journey. My body is still broken, but the valley is less dark and deep. So I rejoice with all my heart. I know that God is good. Let my soul rejoice at all times. Everywhere, even in deep valleys, no conditions. Always joy. Rejoice my soul. For God is good again. I say rejoice. And there's a few more poems. But I'm sure that they'll be written down and shared. A life lived with integrity. A life lived with faithfulness. A life lived with service. A love of community, a love of family, a love of friends. That was Alina. As Tom said, her focus on those she loved never wavered. She put others first. I remember the wedding before the wedding. <laughs> that beautiful day when she did that um, dance. She came over to me after, before I left. And she looked at me and she said, Tom, my bucket list is now done. <laughs> she made a list and about another great blessing because she was able to be there for the wedding. Brothers and sisters, we're here today to remember, to bless, to comfort, to console, and to give thanks. I never understood it till I got older, but my mother used to say, son, death is not the worst thing that can happen to you. I get that now. Because I'm some deep, profound way when you live a life of gratitude, and by the way, it's kind of ironic this weekend is Thanksgiving. The readings that Elena chose, Isaiah, <laughs> rooted in Thanksgiving, God's promise for the world, even in the midst of all the turmoil, woke up this morning with Israel on fire, Yet the vineyard requires caretakers, people of gratitude. The second reading, Paul's insight is the resurrection that we live, we die, but we fall back into the arms of the one who named us before the foundation of the world. The image of the tent portrays that so beautifully. The Beatitudes, why did I choose those Beatitudes? Well, they tell us how to walk in the world, the Alina way. 
the way in which a very important question is answered. What does someone look like who holds on to faith? Come what may. Who are those who mourn? Well, they're the people without paralyzing anxiety hold on to what is noble and true in the face of all the cracks so real in life. And the merciful, well, that first question, is there something I need to forgive you for? Isn't that profound? The merciful Elena was, the gracious ones who dared to forgive. And the pure of heart, they're authentic. They don't go through life pretending, but they are who they are. And no matter what, Elena accepts the pain that makes the good triumph. Tom mentions a better person because he's known her. We all are. Because she lived that worldview. Herman Hesse, the great German novelist, wrote that the call of death is a call of love. Death can be sweet if we answer it in the affirmative, if we accept it as one of the great eternal forms of life and transformation. And even though it's hard to let go of a wife, a mother, a sister, grandmother and aunt friends. The message of faith is it does not have the last word. God's ability to give life. So let us remember Elena with God's let us remember in the eternal presence of the one she loved and served. ALS did not take away her dignity, her integrity, her love of life. But boy, she's gone too soon. Yeah, she'll be missed. But we say today, dear friends, Go with God until we meet again. May his angels lead you to paradise as you begin your new life in which health replaces illness, certainly replaces doubt as you enter the company of those who've gone before you, your parents, your friends. And may our merciful and compassionate God bless you we shall never forget you, Elena. May your sunset be beautiful. Rest in peace, good and faithful servant. Amen. Now we're going to play a song that she wanted. And, I mean, look, she's got the big choir. <laughs> it's just a piano player at a funeral usually, but she wanted them all here. Aren't they doing a great job? So um, this is the song she wanted. How beautiful is the body of Christ and that she was.
We now stand and offer our prayers as Colleen comes forward. We pray for Lena, her family, her friends, her community, our world. For Alina, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted into the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God may welcome into his glory those of our family and friends who have departed life. Jan and Maria Saipos and all deceased family members, grant them an everlasting home with your son, Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer unjustly these sins against your love and gather them into the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the family members and friends of Alina experience the strength of our faith in the resurrection of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Alina seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who gather here today stay ready to comfort all who suffer grief and loss. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those in public office may promote justice and peace and build a society where our children will live in peace and security. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those prayers to be in our own hearts, we pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we give you thanks this day. Listen to our prayers. Give us and all gathered here this day peace deepen in our hearts. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Please join us. Offer to him is hymn number 636. 636. Blessed are they.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And let us pray. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Elena may be taken up to the glory of your Son, in whose great mystery of love we're all united to Christ our Lord. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For even though by your own fall we die, yet by your compassion and grace we are redeemed your great victory and with him are called back into life. So the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gotten to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gary, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and the entire people of God your son has gained for you. Remember your disciple, your daughter, Elena, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Deceased loved ones of all are gathered those killed in Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, natural disasters, and all who died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Who the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, will bless you, Joseph, her spouse, who the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. When we do not know what to say, Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and union in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you all this day. Share that peace with one another. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world and bless are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And may the body and blood of Christ keep us all safe for everlasting life. ministers in the center. For those of you who come to communion, you're welcome. Those of you who wish just to come and receive a blessing, put your hand on your shoulder, or you remain seated where you are. Communion is in number 808. 
808, let us be brave. Thank you. 